So learning how to budget, and this is the next step, is learning how to budget. So now we've, we've solved this problem that I'm not making enough money because you're going to go make some money. Right? <laughs> Maybe. Eventually, every one of you will. Okay? So no matter where you're at right now, so we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do uh, to increase your odds of success, and that's living on a budget. I believe that every day for the rest of your life, you should have a budget every single month. I strongly believe that. Did you all hear me? Every day for the rest of your, every month for the rest of your life, you should live on a budget. So what we're going to, the exercise we're going to do today, I really think can help you. So let's, let's start with what is a budget. A budget is simply an estimate of your income and expenses for a set period. Uh, set period. Okay? Sometimes people can break this down weekly. Most people function monthly. Your rent probably comes once a month. Your utilities once, your phone bills, things like this. Right? So that's what a budget is. Um, some reasons to create a budget, obviously, is to, to know exactly where your hard-earned income is going each month so that you can get a grip on your spending. Somebody already said they struggle with that a little bit. Okay? To avoid the debt trap, we don't want to go into debt, okay? And to save for the future, for needs and wants. The key to a good budget is telling every dollar where you, it will go. That is the key to having a good budget. And what we're going to do over the course of the next few minutes is we're going to create what we call a zero-based budget. There are different, there's a couple different types with subtle differences. We're going to deal with a zero-based budget. Okay, a zero-based budget starts off with an income assumption at the very top hand corner of the left hand corner of the page. There's one little loan box that says monthly take home pay. I want everybody in here to write in an expected amount of money that you're going to have in the next 30 days. So you're including everything, scholarship money, Full-time jobs, part-time jobs, that everything goes in there. Okay? The next step is we're going to set some goals. In each one of these categories are different areas that people use their money for. Charity, food, saving, clothing, housing, transportation, utilities, health. Right here, you see, in this little box, there's a number. We're going to set a goal, and we're going to use that percentage as just a starting point for us. Okay? So it might look like this. If you're making 1,000 marks, what do you mean no? Abundance. If you're going to think, you should think big. Right? That's, that's not big, by the way. Bigger than where you are. But as an example, if you were making that, and you can do math. Everybody in here passed math? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take that percentage. If you're making 1,000, 10% of that is 100. Right? So if it's 5% for food, then put that number in there for your goal. I didn't think it was a group discussion, but apparently some people needed help with the math. Sarcasm. American sarcasm. Drake sarcasm. Okay. You should be able to do this with your mouth closed. Just write. Okay? That was aggressive, I know. But you take the percentage, you put it in that box, and you do this for each category. Then, the next step is to list your expenses, okay? So there are two types of expenses. There are fixed expenses. Is your rent, does it ever change? Those that are living in an apartment. It's fixed. So those are easy. We know that number. It's the variable ones that are difficult. See, what Dawn suggested, you will see over here on your sheet, there's a little envelope. I know there's a system that people are transferring money into your bank account. Maybe you move it to PayPal, then put it on a debit card. Does this sound like some, what people do? Yeah. 
They put it on some kind of Visa or MasterCard. And there's others that maybe just use cash. Who in here just uses cash? Okay, this will be easier for you, right? But you could create these envelopes. You know what an envelope is? Yeah. You take an empty envelope, you label it rent. Take another envelope, you label it food. You could take one, label it entertainment. You follow me? You put that money that you get into these envelopes. And you can't go beyond what's in the envelope. See, if you do this correctly, you, it's impossible for you to overspend because when you open the envelope, there's nothing there. So if you've put in your entertainment budget, and I'll give you an example of this for us. Do you guys do anything for entertainment? Sure. I know you do. You've Coffee. What else? What else do you do for entertainment? Movies. Video games. Oh, yeah. Anyone else? Uh, right? You put this money in the envelope and you use it for entertainment. But there are things that don't cost money that you can entertain yourself with. Correctly? Correctly? That's not correct. Correct? When Ann and I used to have a budget for entertainment and we would run out, we would find creative ways to entertain ourselves. We would begin board games. We would roast hot dogs in our fireplace. We did things on a specific date and time for that. That's a time management thing. We won't get into that right now. But these are things that you can do that don't cost money. And by the way, those times were the most meaningful for us. We built great friendships and relationships with our family because we were broke. Ironic, isn't it? So it's important. You can do these things. Are you all with me? You all can follow this worksheet? Is it helping? You have to make sure it does not go above 100. But you might spend nothing on charity. Right? So that gets completely eliminated. Right? Some of you are too grumpy to give. I'm just kidding. This is a very personal. You have to own this process. Do you want to be responsible? Or do you want to be careless? Mark's bringing up a great point. You can spend it on other things. What I'm going to talk to you about is saving it. Okay? Because once you subtract, there's two sides to this at the very bottom. Once you add up your expenses, you put your income here, you add up your expenses, and this difference should be zero. If there is a surplus, that goes into savings, even though you already saved your 10%. Okay? See, eventually you'll start to get ahead. That money you budgeted in the envelope for the car repair, you don't have to put in there next month because you have there, right? It's accumulated enough, maybe. But over time, if you're saving money, you'll really start to get ahead. This is, guys, this, this subject I know everybody was excited about. Money. So complicated. This is high school level stuff for the boys, middle school for the girls. They're much smarter than we are. Okay? This is not college information. The, I, and I say that so sincerely, I'm telling you. That's how strongly I feel about this. These skills should be taught the first day you walk in to a high school and understand it, in my opinion. It would solve a lot of grief moving forward. So, so that's the goal. Okay, If you have a flexible income where it, you don't know what that fixed income is every month, it's going to be a little more challenging for you because you're going to have to create the expenses and then match that income or exceed it. That should cause you to be motivated to work harder. See, that's what self-employed people do. Those that ha have no employment or employment think that they, what else am I supposed to do? Work more. Sorry. You may have to do that because who are you fighting for? And? your family, things that you care about. 
Okay? So, um, five most effective ways to improve maybe coffee bars or eating out, do less. Okay? Groceries, look for things that are on sale or buy in bulk. Clothes, do they have second hand stores here? Yeah. Good place to shop. They have nice things there. Okay? Utilities, turn the lights off. Everywhere you go, turn the light off. Make it a game. If you're not in the room, turn the light off. Causes your bill to go up, right? Public transportation. Okay? Plan your day so that you can walk more or accomplish multiple tasks while, tasks while, you're, while you're moving. All right? So, um, as I close here, I believe you should do this every month. You should work this out every month. New sheet, new sheet, new sheet. Okay? If you geniuses want to create a math program on your computer, do it. Spreadsheet, fine. Okay? But this works pretty effectively. Okay? And I want to encourage you to do that. I have a financial meeting with myself every month. It's important. Okay? I have to know where I am at every time, at every moment. 